Hello, I wanted to do a video tutorial today on how to work with shadow maps in Maya. So here we have a very simple scene with two planes, one that has some alpha applied to it so that it's transparent, and a ground floor. So the first thing to get shadow maps working in Maya is to enable them here in the viewport. Once you click on this icon, then you're going to see that the shadows will be casted on the objects. As you may notice, in this scene it looks okay, but once you come closer, you're going to see that the depth map resolution starts to become a problem. Now, thankfully, we can adjust this depth map resolution on each light. If you select the light, you can tick here, use depth map shadows, and here you have control over the resolution. As you can see, the default one was higher resolution than the current one. Here you can go as high as 4K. And as you can see there, you really need to go quite close in order to see resolution artifacts. Now, because this resolution gets distributed into all the elements of the scene, it's very important to take advantage of these use autofocus attribute. Whenever this is ticked, means that every object in the scene that has the casting shadows enabled will be within the depth map resolution. That means that the 4K resolution that we have here is distributed between this entire scene. So let's change that. If you didn't want the resolution to be, for example, distributed on every object in a scene, what you can do is you can select the object that you don't want in the shadow map, go into the shape, go into render stats, and then disable cast shadows. That means that this object won't be casting any shadows anymore, but it will receive from other objects that cast shadows, such as this plane here. There's also a way to control the focus from within the light as well. So once you untick this, you're going to see here that the width focus is enabled. And here you can then control the area of effect of the shadow map. So if we put this to something very low, like 5, you're going to see here that the shadow map now is only distributed within this area. And you will see that the resolution is quite high. Now, this normally won't be the case, so you will want to go higher with this so that it manages to cover where your action is taking place. So for us, it's going to be around 30. There we go. Now we have a 4K depth map distributed along everything that's interesting for us in the scene, and therefore we have very high resolution shadow maps in this case. Now the problem with directional lights is that they have certain limitations. Mainly, they don't really have a position, so if I move these around, you're going to see even though my width focus is of 30, it doesn't really follow the position of my light. It always will stay relative to the origin of the scene, so basically the 0, 0, 0 coordinate. Now this will most likely not be the case for most scenes, so working with directional light only makes sense if you're working close to the origin, and that's when the spotlight comes in. Working with spotlights makes, it, makes everything pretty much much easier, especially on large scenes. Let me hide this. Shadow maps and spotlights work pretty much in the same way. You have a depth map shadow, which we put at 4K. By the way, it doesn't matter if you go higher than 4K. For some reason, Maya doesn't change anything. If you know how to go over this limitation, I'd love to hear it from you guys. So the cool thing about point lights is that they do have a position. So the shadow map, whatever solution you have, is always going to be relative or distribute it within the cone light. So if I were to middle mouse track on the viewport to see what we're seeing from the spotlight, this resolution will get distributed along the exact spotlight. So if we cover the entire scene with our spotlight, then we're going to have the 4K resolution in the depth map distributed along the entire scene. So if we go to the perspective view, we're going to see that we have there our 4K resolution depth map here. 
It's also nice to work with spotlights as you have a visual representation of the focus. So in a way you, you know exactly where the depth map is being distributed and you can also put them in an array so that you have several different depth maps distributed along your scene as well. Now, in the case that you want more parallel shadows to be casted, you can also put the spotlight very far away from the scene and reduce the cone angle. That way you're going to have something that's very close to what a directional light is casting. So once we switch to the perspective, you're going to notice that we have a very decreased resolution, even though the distribution is supposed to be along this uh, cone. So the problem here was that for the spotlight, you actually do need to set the autofocus so that the resolution gets distributed by the cone angle. So now you have a 4K resolution distributed only along the scene. So you have very nice shadows. In order to get shadows on transparent objects, with MNPRX materials, you need to set up the transparency in the alpha attributes. So for example, here, I have a simple checker that's connected to the alpha mask. Once you have that on the alpha mask, the shadow maps are going to respect the alpha value and is going to basically shine light through the transparent parts of the object. Shadows in Maya are quite limited, unfortunately, as it's not really a real-time application. So we won't be able to improve on the shadows much unless we integrate our external renderer with it, which we're working on right now, but you'll have to wait a little bit for that to come out. If you want to further troubleshoot shadows within Maya, I can also recommend you to check out the troubleshoot shadows in the Maya documentation. And especially if you have very large scenes, you're going to have to take this into account, basically disable the automatic clipping of the shadow depth map and then set your own far and near clipping plane to have the best results. I'm going to leave a link to this documentation in the description of the video. And that's it. Thanks for watching and I hope you make the most out of shadow mapping in Maya and using MNPRX.